My name is Lisa Biles. I'm actually originally from Hawkinsville, Georgia. I don't know if y'all know where that is, but um, if you know where Perry is, we are a little small town about 30 minutes from Perry. Um, so I grew up in central Georgia. I did not grow up here in Valdosta. Um, my husband, Brent Biles, actually is the one that grew up here in Valdosta. Um, and then he moved us all the way out to Lanier County. So I had no idea what I was getting into when um, we moved over to Lakeland, um, which is a great town, but there is absolutely nothing to do there, right? Um, so there is a lot of ag, I would say, that um, happens over in Lakeland. So that's kind of how um, he got started in farming. His dad had a tobacco farm years ago. Um, I believe on Bemis Road in Valdosta. And so his whole entire family um, started the whole farm and thing. And then when he was 18 years old, he left and went into the Marine Corps, was a Marine for 12 years. Me and him met in the process of all of that. Um, and then he got out of the Marines and brought us back here to his hometown in Valdosta. So that's how I ended up here in Valdosta as well. Um, and so I had gone to school to be a surgical technologist. Do y'all know what that is? Surgical technologist. I still don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when the surgeon, when you have to have surgery, there's a surgeon, you know, that's cutting on you and all that, but there's an assistant there with the surgeon, and they are the ones that are, you know, holding tissues and organs and sewing things up at the end. So that's actually what I was doing. I was a surgical tech here at, um, well, I say here, this is Quitman, but over at uh, Valdosta Orthopedics. That's where I worked, so I did orthopedics. And so I was here working as a surge tech, and Brent was farming and doing his thing, and I decided that being a surge tech had kind of taken me away from two kids that we just had, and they were very young at the time. And so I decided I wanted to open some type of business. I could not even keep a fern alive. I mean, I, I did not know how to do any kind of farming, no kind of gardening, like none of that. And so we thought about it. I was still working as a surge tech, and I don't know if y'all know who Joanna Gaines is, but she owns Magnolia, and she had come out with this magazine. And so she um, released her magazine that year, which was, I believe, 2018, and there was an article in that magazine, and it was about a flower farmer named Erin Benzacane, and she has a, a farm up in the Skatagit Valley in Washington, which is ideal for growing flowers. It's definitely not South Georgia. So anyway, she has this farm, it's called Florette Flower Farm, and it turns out, I did some research on it, and it turned out she taught classes on how to do flower farming, how to grow it, how to run the business, how to do social media. She did all of that. And so I took her class knowing absolutely nothing about anything and finished, quit my job at Valdosta Orthopedics. And we started with a little plot right behind our chicken pen. It was about a quarter of an acre. And I put some seeds in some seed trays and transplanted them out there and couldn't even pronounce at the time it was calendula instead or it was ca calendula. calendula and I said it calendula I said it the wrong way okay I couldn't even pronounce half of the stuff that I was growing and so anyways I stuck the stuff out there behind the chicken pen and lo and behold a flower farm was born and I was like wow I kind of know what I'm doing here now I did have a lot of help because my husband was a farmer so he kind of knew about pests and how to irrigate things and fertilize and all that great stuff and so anyways this flower farm basically I mean it was a quarter acre and we we grew it um, as a row crop if you know anything about farming everything's done in row crops so we did it like you would a row crop we ran irrigation up under the plastic and we had I don't know maybe 10 or 15 rows 80 feet long about two to three feet wide and so I was like what am I gonna do with all of these flowers <laughs> now that I know I can do this I don't know what to do with them and so we ended up taking them to a farmers market up in Tifton called Wiregrass Farmers Market and um, people bought them which was even more of a surprise I was like 
wow, people are buying these market bouquets. Like, wow. So then I got more into it. So that was in 2019. And then in 2020, uh, when flower season came back around, I was like, okay, we're going to do this and we're going to do this big. Okay. And this was like, you know, October, November. So before everything happened in 2020. So we were planning everything. We had sat down with a grocery store up in Atlanta called Whole Foods. And our Satsumas were already in a lot of their stores. And so it was easy for them to just bring in the flowers, right? And so everything gets rocking and rolling. Flowers are ready to go and everything shut down <laughs> in 2020. So uh, Whole Foods still let me come to two stores because that was about all they had open at the time. Everything else was, um, they were delivering to people's doorsteps up there. And so uh, we cut what we could, took it up to Whole Foods, and then that's kind of what started the grocery store side of everything. So that was in 2020. And then in 2021, um, I added on another grocery store. So then we were in three of their stores. And then in 2022, um, that's when I decided I needed help because now we were in a whole bunch of grocery stores and the schedule for it was Monday and Tuesday, we harvested, Wednesday we packed, and then Thursday I made the trip all the way to Atlanta and all the way back. Um, and then at the time there was no UPIC. So it was very daunting. There was a lot of like groundwork that had to be done on top of like the social media side of trying to run a business. And so then I brought in some help. And so I went um, up to ABAC for one of their, what was it called? The, career fair. For one of their career fair days, um, went up to ABAC and that's where Caitlin came in. So I'm gonna let her kind of give you uh, the story of how she came to the flower shed and then we'll continue on after that. So my name is Caitlin. I'm from just outside of Jacksonville, Florida in a little town called Millburg. It's not little, that was a joke in my um, And then so I, my original plan for my life was I'm gonna graduate high school, I'm gonna go to the University of Florida, get my degree, continue on to higher education, maybe at UF, wow. That didn't happen. I didn't get into UF, and I was like, where am I going to go? So I knew that I wanted to be involved in agriculture because I was in the buffet, and I loved all my ag classes. So I knew about ABAC, but like my senior year, when you know UF didn't work out, I'm like, got to try and apply to ABAC. <laughs> got in, and then I'm moving to Tifton, and um, was there, well, have been in Tifton for now three and a half years. I graduate in May. And so I'm an agriculture communications major, so it's a big word, but basically it's journalism, um, social media marketing, all tied together in one major, and it focuses on agriculture. So rather than being like a journalist for a fashion company, I'm, I would be, you know, maybe a journalist for a flower farm. <laughs> so um, I came to this career fair my junior year, beginning of my junior year, and I was so intimidated because there, I was just dressed in my normal clothes. I came to this career fair, I didn't bring my resume, I didn't know what to expect, and people were walking in fully dressed in their suits, they had their resumes on hand, they were going up to tables, getting interviewed on the spot for big career jobs and internships, and I was like, I need to leave because I don't belong here, I did not feel prepared. So, my boyfriend at the time, fiance now, he um, encouraged me. He's like, you have to talk to someone. And I was like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be here. So he was like, look, there's a flower farm. Like, they look innocent. Just go talk to them. And so I came up to the table. And Tristan was like, he's oh, Tristan. He was like, this is my girlfriend. She uh, doesn't want to talk to anyone, but I'm making her talk to you. <laughs> yep. so I was like, hi, I came in. I did my little intro, and I like wrote my name down. And I was like, I'm not working for a flower farm. Like, that is not what I want for my internship. I don't even want to be here. We left. I did not talk to anyone else. And then Lisa emailed me, and she was like, hey, I'd love to schedule an interview for you to come out and see the farm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so I drove the hour. Just kidding. Yeah. Four, 53 minutes from Tiffany yeah. to Naylor. And it was really cool. I've been on a farm before, but not um, just more like farm tours. I haven't like, been in the farm life. Like, I'm from the city, city girl through and through. So being on a farm and like meeting a real farmer, I'm like, this is kind of cool. I'm kind of into this. 
So she told me what she was looking for, and it was December, November. Yeah. So there was no flowers, and she's like, "Just picture this in your head. <laughs> flowers over here and flowers over there." And I was like, "Right now, all I see are oranges, but yep. okay, that's fine." So then um, I left, and like a week later, she offered me the internship, and I was like, "Oh, cool! I guess I have to take it now." <laughs> what now? <laughs> so I took the internship yeah. as a social media or uh, ad communications intern. So my plan was to just do all her social media for the summer and also help in the flower fields. So then May came <laughs> along. I ended up moving to Valdosta just for the summer to work for Lisa. And so I started and then I never left. And so now I'm still here. And we did the U pick all last summer. And then we um, started the podcast in October and mm -hmm. November. And then now I'm here, and I won't be here for much longer because I finally got into UF. <laughs> <laughs> I'm graduating in May and starting at UF in the fall for my master's in math. So Caitlin came in. Um, so you started in May, okay? So you know Mother's Day was is my big like send off is what I say. Like that's the start of my season. And so we, um, I had two interns actually, her and another one. And so um, we did Mother's Day. We got the bouquets out there for that. And then she came in um, at the end of May. And so she had never been on a farm. She had never been around flowers, which was one of the reasons why I had chose her because I didn't want someone that knew a bunch of knowledge, had a bunch of knowledge about this stuff because I don't have a bunch of knowledge about this stuff. I only know what I've been taught and what I have learned over the years. So I wanted to be able to kind of mold somebody into, you know, kind of the helper that I needed, not somebody telling me what to do. Does that make sense? And then the other intern that I had was a horticulture major. So she did have some, you know, background in how to grow plants and things like that, but still she was learning. So... When she came in, she was not prepared, I don't think, for the farming side of things. Now, she definitely got us prepared for social media and Facebook and Instagram and all those things. And she'll talk about that in a minute. But she had to learn the growing techniques. How does a flower come from a seed all the way to a bloom? How does it make it to a grocery store shelf? What all is involved in all of that? So we spent May, June, July, and part of August... Um, her learning all of that. She could probably run her own flower farm if she wanted to today, but now she needed to know all of that so that she could properly communicate on social media how everything works. So now when people, you know, ask questions on social media, she can answer all of that, which is such a blessing, um, which, and she's definitely going to be missed for sure when she leaves. But, um, and then she has kind of taken over the you pick side of things because when those customers have, you know, questions about the flowers and things like that, now Caitlin can answer them. Um, so anyways, that's kind of how her summer was last summer. And then this year, it brings us up to where we are um, moving forward. So our UPIC will open up this year, June the 3rd. Um, on opening day last year, we had a line of cars. I don't know how in the world. That, well, I mean, social media. I mean, it was on social media. Um, and she advertised a lot for it. But opening day in Lakeland, Georgia, people were coming down the driveway and coming to like pick flowers. And me it was crazy. Like, me, like my friend was coming. I knew that. Yes. And then like maybe two strangers. I, yes. I think we had like. We had decided years. about five to 10 people, cars were going to come through. And it was it busy all day. Yeah. People, cars. And so from there, from opening day, it just grew. Every single weekend, we had more people coming out, more people coming out. Um, and the last event that we did last season was a flower haul. And we had flowers until October. So we were able to um, do the U-Pick until Halloween because it's South Georgia. You can grow anything, basically. Well, I'm a heat tolerant, but... Anyway, so um, we had the UPIC open from June until Halloween, and then um, we finally just had to close it down, even though our marigolds were just, I mean, popping off um, in October, and snapdragons were coming back. 
So um, anyways, we closed it at Halloween. So the plan this year is to hopefully be open again until Halloween. But the, the response from the customers is just, we had people that would come every single week. Like they wanted to come and get fresh bouquets and, and pick their own. And so we had one weekend of family that drove six hours from oh, South yeah. Carolina because they heard about our farm. Which I thought was crazy. I was like, what? But there's nothing like this. And if you own a business, you definitely know social media is, you know, how you get your customers, how you advertise these days. And so that's where Caitlin came in because that's where her expertise is. And so she's going to talk a little bit about social media for the flower shed. So first and foremost, this is for any business that you're ever part of or any advice that you can give someone for their business is they need to have a website. There has to be something that everyone can go back and check all of your frequently asked questions, your addresses, they can find out who you are, who the owners are, who the operators are. If you don't have a website, your, your business will not be as successful because throughout your posts on social media, things get lost very, very easily. People don't want to have to scroll and scroll and find when you're open and scroll and find who your owners are. So that's like the very first thing that you need to think of when you have a business. And Lisa and Brent have a very good website, both with Rolling Branch and Flower Shed. And so um, I took a class last semester that was all about um, websites and blogging and things like that. So in probably August or September, right when I started that class, I started blogging for the Flower Shed, which is really beneficial because that's a great way for you to get people on your website that maybe have never been there before. So if you just make a really quick blog, blog post and post it to your social media, then people will be like, okay, let me click on this blog post. And that's when they can go to your, go to your page and they learn when you're going to be open and they learn about who you are. So definitely to be successful, I recommend starting with a really good website. And if you don't know how to make a website, there's plenty of people out there that know how to make websites, and you can um, do it pretty affordably if you find the right person, and nine times out of ten, it's not super hard to make a website on your own. If you know how to turn on a computer, you can make a website for free for yourself. So that's just where I want to start with that. Um, and then you have to be really consistent on your social media side. Once your website is built and put on there, if you don't want to be a blogger, if you don't want to do anything, your website should just be standalone good where you don't have to keep constantly updating it. That's when you can go to your social media and put your daily updates or weekly updates or whatever like schedule works out for you. But you have to be consistent because if you only post once a month, people are going to forget about you. If you only post um, once a week, but there's you know 15 other businesses in your town that post every day, you're just missing out on opportunities for people to see your name over and over again. So you have to be consistent and you have to kind of know also when your people are on social media. So if you have, you know, Facebook or Instagram, whatever, it'll tell you, post it this time, post it this time. Pay attention to that because it really does matter. So for me, sometimes if I want to post like 10 in the morning because that's when I'm online and I'm ready for a post to go out, well, Lisa doesn't get done with her day until 7 o'clock at night. So, you know, like after the kids and dinner and everything. So she's not going to see my post because it's already going to be way at the bottom. And um, so you just have to think about the correct when you, when you need to post things for your business or even your personal life. And a lot of times people really don't care about the nice, pretty, beautiful graphics that you spend hours putting together. They want to <laughs> see you. They want to see your behind the scenes. They want to see what you're doing. If you are just going out that day just to lay mulch in your like, front like porch, people want to see that. They, I mean, the end result, result is cool too, but if you just take a quick video of you pouring mulch in that in your garden bed, that's what people want to see. Because they want to see you being real. They don't want you to see you like hide behind this perfect social media, you know. And, and a lot of times, the posts that you think mm -hmm. are going to do really well because you put your whole heart and soul into making this video or this post, sometimes those don't do well. And what does well is you pouring mulch in your garden bed. So, um, and my last thing I really want to say is to always be responsive on your social media. So if you have a business or whatever you're, um, you're posting for, be responsive. If people ask a question, try not to make them sit and wait for days for an answer because they're gonna forget about you and they've already found an answer somewhere else for another business. So if people comment, 
try not to wait more than like 24 hours to get back to them because I get frustrated when I message a business. Right now I'm planning a wedding. I'm messaging a lot of vendors, trying to keep up with it. It's really frustrating when it takes like three or four days for them to get back to me because I'm trying to get stuff planned for my life. So if I'm, te- if I'm messaging you flower show, hey, are y'all open this Saturday? And I don't reply until Saturday morning. They've already got plans anyway for Saturday by that point. So just try to be responsive to comments, questions, Sometimes it can be overwhelming, especially if you're in the middle of your season or whatever yeah. you know your social media is for. But um, I just want to say to be responsive, and also people really like to see educational stuff. So it's really cool posting behind the scenes and making really fun, pretty graphics. But also to make it a little bit educational, people really enjoy that as well. So rather than just posting a picture of Zinnia. Um, saying in the garden today, you could say, here's a zinnia that I'm working on in the garden. Here's what they enjoy and what they need to survive. And, and people really like that. You, yeah. You'd be very shocked to see how many people respond to super like educational, informative posts like that. So that's all I have to say about social media. <laughs> I wish I could say my whole four-year degree. <laughs> I, know, right. I will say this. Um, so we have gotten into TikTok, the flower shed. Um, and I had kind of started it right before she came on board. And the craziest thing is we, we usually map out our social media. So Mm -hmm. like what's going to be posted on Monday, Tuesday, when, you know, through the whole week, um, especially right now, because we just, we don't have a lot of content because not a lot's happening, you know? Um, and so anyways, we will have a whole schedule, you know, laid out. These are what videos we're going to post. This is what graphics we're going to do like this you know, just big, beautiful schedule for social media. And then I go and make some random video with me holding a a thing of flowers, walking, just walking. That's it. And the next day I woke up to 11,000 followers on TikTok. (laughs) So that just goes to show you, like, you just don't know what is going to like hit. You know what I mean? Um, it, it's crazy. Like we will spend the most amount of time on some of these videos that we think are great. And then Cause they are, they are, <laughs> they are great. And then it'll get, you know, a couple hundred likes or something like that. But then we'll post something like her, the wind blowing in her hair while she's cutting a zinnia. And, and then like, love the wind. yeah, so 25,000 <laughs> hits, you know, like it's crazy. Um, but anyway, so our, uh, TikTok has kind of like um, skyrocketed, I guess. We're a lot more popular on TikTok than we are Instagram, which is, I, I think is why we had someone from South Carolina come down because we seem to reach like people that are not in this area. Um, and they think it's cool and it's a niche, you know, that's not something that you see a lot on social media is somebody growing flowers. And so people do like the educational side of it because they don't know, they just don't know anything about it. We uh, hand seed everything into uh, the trays, 72 cell trays, and then we take it out there to the field and we transplant it when it's ready, when it's, I'm sure y'all know, about yay tall. We transplant it out there and then from there we just, you know, nurture it, care for it, sing to it, do whatever you gotta do. And then um, for me, it's worked out, a flower farm has come about. So (laughs) every year that has seemed to work. So that's kind of like my growing, you know, practice in a nutshell. Y'all know there's way more to it than that. But um, I think that's pretty much it for our presentation. Is that long enough? I'm at 31 minutes. Okay, I'm going to subscribe to our show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Also, leave us a five-star rating and don't forget to also leave us a review. Or you can send us a message to one of our social media accounts. You can find The Flower Shed on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and YouTube. Search The Flower underscore Shed or The Flower Shed. You can find Rolling Branch Farms on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Search Rolling Branch Farms. Thanks for listening.